why we have strife in our churches and uh, you, we can also kind of put this in our whole life. Why do we, why do we argue with people? Why is there, you know, uh, she just doesn't listen. My husband doesn't get me. My wife doesn't get me. He doesn't listen. He doesn't meet my needs. She doesn't meet my needs. Blah, 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 blah. Why we have strife in our churches. Uh, we're in, we're in uh, How to Treat Siri, People Series Part 12. I want you to, if you have a Bible, if you don't, you can just look up here. But if you have a Bible, please turn with me to Psalm 37. And my text really is verse 4. But if you, again, you can just look up on the screen. The text is, is, is in bold letters there. But let's read here. Ready? Let's start. Uh, fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Now let's read the bold here together. Ready? Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord, and trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as noonday. Why do Christians, for the matter of fact, everybody, have strife between themselves and others? I see, you know, uh, two kids. This was probably, uh, th this was, you know, brother and sister. And, you know, uh, I could imagine that Sarah had a brother. That's probably what she would have done. Amen. I can imagine, uh, I can imagine if it was two girls, Mariah and Danielle, and if it was a third one, uh, Jennifer. Amen. Maybe it could be husband and wife, uh, uh, Freddie and Malou, or Elsie and me, uh, or, or I don't know, but why do we have strife? The plain, the, the, we can put it down to one plain answer, and that is unfulfilled appetites. Now, I'm not talking, how many people are hungry right now? Amen? Uh, 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 Freddie's like, as soon as he got the sushi eight thing, I'm, see ya, Pastor, God bless you, I'm out of here, amen. Um, uh, uh, we mentioned pizza, P uh, so pizza, and, and, and Mrs. St. Louis radar went, and uh, uh, P I'm not talking that, I'm talking in your heart appetites. We plainly desire to have an appetite, or have an appetite to receive something which we should not or do not have. Uh, we always want more. How many people would like more money? Raise your hand. Anybody, everybody would like. How many people would like a, a, a better husband or a better wife? <laughs> Hopefully, if you're a female, you don't want a better wife. Okay, God bless you, but ugh. Um, but anyways, let me continue on. It's unfulfilled appetites. A good definition would be ba uh, the balancing of wants and possessions. Um, there should there are there are two ways to be rich. Did you realize that? There are now. Okay, if I was to give uh, uh, Miss Sarah, come on up here for a second. I have a platinum credit card. Get the pin number. If I was to say Sarah, here you go. My pin number is one two three four. It's not. Here you go. Go go shop. She'd be out of here. Her and her mom would be out of here like a shot. They would be, if you got in their way, they would drop kick you, Jesus, through the goalpost of life. Amen? Waha! And they'd be gone. Thank you. That's not the riches I'm talking about. Because, see, you know what? Money can burn. Uh, um, somebody can go in and, and steal your wallet. You can, you can. You, you had it happen. How many people have ever lost like 20 bucks? Raise your hand. And you searched the ends of the earth like, bleh, 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 and you're like hyperventilating because, well, you lost money. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is the things that nobody can take. You know, I'm saved. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. 
Nobody can take that from me. I know if Mrs. St. Louis was going to go and she, they come over for dinner and she was going to take a gun and <laughs> me in my head or take me and throw me off, off my balcony. By the way, the five, the five flights down wouldn't kill me. It's the sudden stop at the end, amen? And, and I was to die. I'm picking on me because I, I, I have to be good to your daughter tonight. I wasn't so good this morning to her. I picked on her a little bit this morning. So you're next in line. But if I was to die today, I know for sure at the moment my heart stops, my soul would be standing in front of Jesus Christ up in heaven. Glory to God. Nobody can take that away from me. But you can take my money. My wife does it all the time. <laughs> Freddie, amen. I'm talking about something that's in your heart. There are two types of ways of being blessed. One, being able to afford what he wants, what one wants. Okay? This, now, this is talking about a different one. This is about monetary things. You can afford the thing. How many people can afford $2 for a cup of coffee? Raise your hand. God bless you. Amen. The other one is wanting only what one can afford. Now, I'd love a brand new car. Who wouldn't? I can't afford it. Church, you want to afford it for me? Amen, God bless you. Amen. No, you can't afford that either. But what I'm talking about in here is something, if we get down pat, what we, what we, what, what only nobody can take away from us that can't be stolen, maybe our relationship with others will be better. How many people know somebody that when you see them, you go, oh man, why do I have to see them? Be honest. I know people that, you know, I, their, their phone number comes up and it's like, Really? I got one person that calls me, and all they do is they just call, and, and they call at late hours of the night. And they, well, Pastor Payne, how are, I've got this, and I love them, don't get me wrong, I love them and all, but nothing, not one time, do they ever praise God. And I said, you know what, just start praising God, sir. And God will start blessing you. He said, well, he doesn't bless me monetary. Nobody will bless you by your heart being happy. Amen? A happy heart is the most valuable thing you'll ever have. That's a whole different story, and I'm going to talk, talk about that probably at a later date. But the secret balance of wants and riches is, the, is in the possessions. If I, I am rich, I get what I want. If I am rich, I want what I have. If I'm poor, I rejoice in what I get. Simple as that. You rejoice in what you get. Um, it's like you know, you a kid. You know, you buy a uh, you buy a new video game or a video game system, or you buy some uh, you know new stuff for the kids, and they play with the box. Amen. How how many kids got something new and you played with the box? Be honest. Yeah, we kind of did. Yeah. And your mom's going. Or your dad's going, are you kidding me? I spent $400 on that thing. You're playing with a $2, bo a 50 cent box. Are you really? Let me just take the back, amen? It's like a cat. You buy him all these toys and what does he do? Play with the box. Play with the wrapping paper at Christmas, amen? <laughs> I ain't getting my cats anything here, anything for Christmas, man. It's the kids what take off their thing. Rupert, Angel, there's your gift, amen? The paper. It's, it's, a, it, it's being thankful with what God gave you. Um, in the first place, if we delight, I mean, this point number one, uh, going to point number one is review from last week, but many of you weren't here because we were locked out. So uh, I'm going to do a little longer review. If we delight ourselves in the Lord, our desires can be satisfied so we can grow uh, to want what we have. God is not saying in our, in, our, in, our, uh, uh, in our text where it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. It's not so saying here that he will give us or he will increase what we have to fulfill the lusts of our carnal nature. 
What he's saying here is if we delight ourselves in him, our desires will become equal with our possessions. In other words, we will have the same mind as him. You know, how many people would like to have a million dollars and go on a round the world vacation trip? Raise your hand. That might be carnal. Uh, I'd like to have a million dollars. I'd like to pay off Sarah's car. I'd like to, I'd, 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 I'd love to buy, our, buy, buy my in-laws a, a new, put up, have them put a new house up. I'd like to put a down payment on a church building. I'd love to do all that. But what, it, what this verse is saying is if our hearts are melted to him, he'll give us the right desires. And then when we have the right desire, when we have what we desire, guess what we, have, what we are? We're content and a happy Christian and a happy, you remember, you know the saying, and Freddie's been married 30 years, and, and uh, I'm going to ask Mariah this, Mariah, when mama's not happy in the house, usually nobody's happy, right? Amen. And, uh, you know, when we're happy, we are going to be, we're going to have a happy home. We're going to have a happy, a happy, uh, uh, um, a happy service. We're going to want to do more for the Lord. I love God. I'm content with what we have. I was asked recently, would I be content if God just kept us in this room for the rest of, until uh, he came back? I said, I'd be content, but squashed. In other words, we're growing. We're, we have, what, three, four empty seats tonight. Uh, we get any bigger, we're in trouble, amen? <laughs> That's Okay. I'd be content. Now, I, because if God, if this is what, what God wanted us to do and wanted us to be, I, I, I'd much rather be in a smaller place and in the will of God than having a huge place and out of the will of God. I said this morning in chapel, the worst day serving the Lord is better than the best day without God. And I've had some pretty bad days. You know, the last three months, Okay, has anyone had a death in the family this week? This is the first week in three months that with somebody we have not had a death in our it's somebody either somebody we personally knew or a death in the family. First time in three months, first week. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so nope, everybody drive home safely, okay, tonight? Please drive home safely, okay? Now, let me continue on here. Some um, interpret the scripture to mean that, and again, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Uh, some interpret the, the scriptures that if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us exactly what we want. No, it's not. Okay, how many people would like, uh, okay, Sarah, you're, you, Sarah has, wants a husband. God hasn't given her one yet. By the way, here's the reason why I, do, I think I don't think God has the right man for her yet because a man right now, the man that God has for her has not uh, matured enough yet. And she would like a husband to cook for and make magic squares for. And by the way, I'm not your husband, but you can make magic squares for me anytime. God bless that. Amen. Um, but it, it, it's what we want. See, not all the time do we, uh, uh, what we want is good for us. Amen. Uh, I drove by, um, I, man, I didn't get an amen on that one. Uh, let me say that again. Not all the time what we want is good for us. Amen. amen. Thank you. I drove by Red Lobster. I love shrimp. All you can eat shrimp. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I have, I have uh, for this week, you and I, buddy, you and I, one day this week, we're going out to Red Lobster. All you can eat shrimp, man. Uh, it's, it's over next Sunday. I've gone twice this year. Glory be to God. I was thinking, man, I'm gonna, my car just kind of pulled over to there, and I'm like, oh, no. I, 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 man, if, if somebody said, Pastor, I'm taking you for all you can eat shrimp tonight, I probably would say, God bless you, but I probably would hurt myself. I've eaten a lot over the last couple of days. I'm at my mom and dad's. All we do is eat, uh, eat, uh, stew, eat. I couldn't do that right now. Again, God is not going to give us what we want. He, what it's saying is, is he will give us our desires. He will give us our desires and, he, uh, and our appetites. 
and He'll fulfill them. You ever done something that you really, you know, for the Lord, and you're thinking, man, I, this is not me. This is of God. You know, I, I, I'm very much of an introvert. I hate crowds. I have a whole bunch of beady little eyes looking at me right now, and it scares every living tire out of me. This isn't me. This is not me. If I preached in front of 5,000 people, I'd be like, the, 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 man, I'd be shaking and, man, alive. But what, it, what that verse is saying is saying is if, if we knit our hearts to God, he'll give, us what, he'll give us the right desires. It may be in some cases he will increase our possessions to equal our desires. And in other cases, it may be he, he may lower our desires to equal our possessions. In other words, our standards are too high. Well, I, so it'd be like Sarah, Sarah say, I want a man who's six foot two, eyes are blue, uh, uh, drives a, 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 a Ford Mustang, Shelby. No, that's Abigail. Um, <laughs> and and, and he ha, he ha, his job, he makes, makes $52,500 a year. And he has shares in this company and this company and this company. God may just say, you know what, lower your standards, honey. Just slow down there. Lower down. Yes, I did say lower your standards, honey. Okay? All right. Whatever it is, it's simply the balancing of, of, uh, of the plane. Okay? In the say, this is the saying that God is telling us in, in John chapter 15, verse 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall uh, ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. We emphasize the part of the verse that tells us to ask what we want and we can get it. If ye abide, ask what ye will. We forget the first part of this. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you. We, you know, uh, folks, God is not saying, you know, he's not a magic genie where you rub him and, okay, you got three wishes. God is saying, you have to do something for me and I'll take care of you. Again, tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock, Sarah will drag her carcass into work. And she gets paid on Friday for doing it. She gets paid. Now, if she decides I'm going to blow off work because, well, I, I, I got to wash my hair or I got to shave my cat or, you know, whatever, whatever she has to do. She won't get paid for it. Amen? It just won't happen. Folks, listen to me. We got to be like God, not God like us. It's God's standards, not our standards. Hello? Now, if we live our lives in and for and through Christ, His Word lives in and through us, and our appetites become sanctified. In other words, set apart for God. And God can give us... Car God... And God can give us carte blanche and power to attorney to ask for uh, what we will because he trusts that we will ask and that we'll, uh, we'll, he'll trust not only that we'll ask, he'll trust that we ask for things that are, his, that are glorifying and honoring him. You know, if I'm, asking for, if I'm asking for my church to be 250 people, or, 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 you know, God, I, Lord, I, please bless me with the world's largest Sunday school that I can brag, that's wrong. I, you know what I pray for? Lord, help our church. I don't care how big it is. Help our church every week to help somebody become more like you. That's it. You know what? I don't want the world. Lord, please don't give me the world's largest Sunday school right now because I couldn't handle it. Man, enough. It's bad enough. I got to handle Sarah every week. Romans chapter 8, 28 will certainly shed some light on this truth. And we know that all things, how many things? All. What, okay, can I get really theological on you? What does the term word all mean? Everything. And we know all things or everything work together for good to them that what? And to, our, to them that are called according to His purpose. Once again, God is reminding us that they, that there may be spirit, uh, that people may be spiritually free to ask what they want because God can trust their wants. 
Okay. We like to think that we love God and are in his will. Everything will work out for good. And that's not true. Is it? It is. It may work out. It always works out for good, but it doesn't always work out painlessly. Hello. We go through aches and pains. You know, uh, uh, your dad went through a whole pile of pain. His, his Part of his leg is gone. Well, that's a good thing because if they didn't, he could have lost his whole leg and then his life. It's a good thing. How many people have ever broken a bone? Raise your hand. And then they had to surgically reset it. It's not like, oh, great, this feels good. No, it hurts, man. Good night. It, it fixes the issue. And you realize everything, how much works out for good? Everything or all. Uh, we think that, uh, that uh, think of as being good changes the, uh, the, when we love God or in His will. The very same thing here that is going to happen to us becomes our good if we just love Him and are in His will and totally trust Him. You know, uh, when you got saved, you trusted the Lord. You did. You just trusted God. You said, well, hey, I, I can't do it on my own. I, 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 okay, for you to be saved, you have to be what? For you to be saved on your own merit, you have to be what? You have to be perfect. Sinless. For you to be saved without a Redeemer, you have to be perfect. You can't be. That's why God said, they're not perfect. And I don't want them to go to hell. So I'm sending my son to die. So Jesus came down and said, okay, God, they're not perfect, but I'll take their place because I am. So Jesus stood in the place for you. Uh, uh, Freddie, come here for a second. And can I bore you again, Miss Malou? All right. I'm kind of straying from my sermon, and I don't know why, but I am. If Freddie, they, have, they share their car. Which vehicle did you drive here today? The van. Okay, who drove? You drove. And you just sat back and went either, dear Lord, or went, dear Lord. If Freddie's driving, she probably went, dear Lord. Anyways, um, she just kind of went along for the ride. Did you have to pay him? To bring you to church? No, you know, he just, you just came, right? You see, just as she got to church through Freddie, we get to heaven through Jesus Christ. And then did you enjoy the ride? You looked around, seen all the, the trees changing colors and stuff like that. Folks, listen to me. We can enjoy the ride. Thank you, folks. You may sit down again. We can enjoy the ride with Jesus Christ. He paid it all. Again, if we were to, uh, we were, if we were to uh, um, get to heaven on our own merits, we'd have to be perfect. How many people here are perfect? Raise your hand. Uh, how many people have ever told a white lie? Raise a little lie. Raise your hand. How many people have ever? How many people drive? Raise your hand. How many people went out fifty-one or in a fifty? Uh huh. The only one that could not say that would be Rob because if you drive behind Rob on the highway, he does 80 in 100. Love Rob, but yeah, he can. Anyways, the wise Christian, let me just continue on. Let's suppose Christians are not living in the will of God and, and, and are, not, uh, um, are not filled with the love of Christ. Now, we, we know that, how many people know a Christian that are not supposed to be what they're supposed to be? Not, not where they're supposed to be. We all know people that, you know, how, how many people in this room in areas of their life probably are, where, don't raise your hand, but uh, are not where they're supposed to be. Anyways, the events that come his or her way uh, do not work for his good because they're in sin. You know, if you're drinking and driving and you hit a tree or hit somebody um, or hit a snowbank, drive carelessly in a snowbank, teasing her, you deserve what you get. Right? 
Once again, it's, it all comes down to our appetite. What we, remember we talked about why we have strife. Again, the biggest time we have strife, biggest time we have strife between people, whether it be husband or wife, co-workers, church members, whatever it is, it is the fact that we have differences. We, we, our appetites are different. Again, when a person delights themselves in the Lord, as in Psalm, our text, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. It means that they abide in God's word and his word abides in him. He loves God and the will of God. It means that his desires are exactly what God wants him to have or her to have. The wise Christian will not allow him or herself to possess appetites that cannot be fulfilled. Again, having an appetite of going on a, uh, on a, on a round-the-world cruise on an on a old-age pension, probably not the wisest thing. Amen? Uh, going, on the, going on a round-the-world trip on a pastor's salary, unless you're Benny Hinn, uh, is not a good thing. Amen? It's not a w wise appetite. Uh, my, certainly I'm not on my salary, but that's okay. I'm not in it for the money. I'd almost do this for no money. That was a joke. I said almost do this for no money. Uh, anyways, the truth is, we, our appetites are based on our relationship with God. Okay? Why? What, what, what can our relationship, what, what, what can I get across? What points do I want to get across tonight? Number one, we want the same time. Why do we have strife? It's because we want the same strife or same type of love that we give. Uh, unconditional. You know, God gives unconditional love. Doesn't he? For God so loved the... He even loves those that don't believe in him. You know, it, it, Peter, when, he, when the Lord came to Peter and asked, this is, lovest thou me? And the word here for love is God, God uses a deep abiding selfless love. But uh, Peter back answered and says, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. That word was called something like a fondness type of love. You know, again, our, our, if, if you're going to study the Bible, you have to study what the original words meant. The word God was saying, do you totally love me? Do you, do you, do you, uh, uh, are you, do you have a selfless love for me? And, and as Peter reacted, God, I'm fond of you. I remember when my wife and I were dating, I've said this story and I'm going to get a dirty look in a second, but that's okay. Uh, she's in the shadows over there. I can barely see her. Um, but when my wife and I were dating, I was in the I love you stage. I said, honey, I love you. And, I, and, and she turned around one time and I said, Elsie, I love you. And she turned around to me and she said, Cam, I like you. My heart went, hmm. How often do we say we love God and that's, it's, a like, uh, it's a like? Is there anything that you got, if God asked you to do or anywhere God asked you to go or anything God would ask you to give up that you would say no? If there's anybody that God asked you to give the gospel to, would you not do it? Ooh. So in other words, do mask murderers deserve the gospel? They deserve to hear it just as much as we are. Maybe more so, absolutely. You know, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, that we all need Jesus Christ. And, 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 and if we, beyond salvation, when a person is beyond salvation is when they're dead. When they take their last breath, it's too late. Have a happy day or an unhappy day, depending on, uh, depending on their, their stand with God. Jesus wants us to have the same abiding love for him as he does for us. See, we want our, our appetites, we want other people to love us, but we don't want to love them. You know that little bus kid, you know? I, I, worked, on a, I worked on a bus route in Chicago, Illinois. These gang kids, these these kids that their mom and dads were, mom was a prostitute, dad was, dad was not around, and mom and dad just, we were their babysitters, and they had snot hanging out here, and it's like, Brother Ken, good to see ya. And you're like, you know, good to see you too. No, we just loved them. 
How many people realize God loves them? How many people believe God loves them? He died for you. He gave it all. You know, I love you folks, but I ain't going to die for you, sorry. I might give my, do- my wife and my daughters my heart, but if Freddie, gave, Freddie, uh, Freddie wanted, needed a heart, sorry, buddy. I'll pray that you get a heart transplant real quick, but I ain't giving you mine. Now, I love them, but not in the, not in the same type of way. See, oftentimes, he, uh, maybe a husband and wife, the hus- they're fighting, and the, and the husband goes, I love you, dear, and she goes, yeah, right. That was a testimonial from Freddie and Malou. <laughs> Don't misunderstand this. We should not love somebody because they love us. Only because they love us. We should love them because they are a person. See, you know the atheist God loves? Somebody who uses God's name in vain, God loves. The, the, the Muslim or the, 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 uh, the, the, the Buddhist or the, the Hindu, God loves them. And we're to love them. See, if, uh, aren't you glad God loves you and he doesn't say, okay, I'm only going to love them as much as they love me? Because the Bible says, if ye love me, what? Keep my commandments. How many Old Testament commandments are there? There's a lot more than 10. There are 613 Old Testament commandments. Do you know them all? How many people know all the 10 commandments? How many people have ever broken one of the commandments? We've all done it. Because the Bible says you break one, you're guilty of them all. And aren't you glad God's love to you is not based on on how our love is to Him? Um, There are a few things that hurt so much as wanting to be loved and not being loved. I remember when I was, uh, when Elsie and I, as I said, when Elsie and I were dating, I knew she loved me, but she just didn't say it. I was okay. But it's like when, you know, these young kids, they, oh, I love him. And she, he goes, I don't like you. And the girl runs away. <laughs> God never runs away. He says, I love you even though you don't love me. Isn't that great? The creator of it all loves us even though oftentimes we don't love him. Do we love him in the same way he loves us? I dare to say, probably for the majority of the Christians, at times it's no. You're, you're, okay, is it your mom? Your mom? Your mom. Your mom. One of the moms. <laughs> the folks in the back's mom. There you go, Amen. Um, I love your mom. She was one of the first people I met in Brantford many years ago. God loves her more. Amen. But see, when we lost track, I still loved her. Because her presence with me is not, is, does not, her presence with me does not constitute my love to her. When you guys know tomorrow, bless God, when you're all a bunch of, you're all doing a bunch of your own things and you're not around me, unless bless God, no, I'm teasing you, uh, but you're not around me, guess what? I'm still going to love you. Miss St. Louis, I love you. You're like my adopted mom. <laughs> Shh, she's okay. I hug the senior citizen ladies. She gets upset over that one, you know. Brother Hiles used to say if they're over 70 or under 7, they're okay to hug. He, when he was like 63, he says, man, he says, I got to raise that 70 up to 80. Because uh, <laughs> that was a joke. Come on, folks. Anyways, God loves us even though at times we don't love him. Isn't that great? And when we have that perspective, our relationship with other people will all start to just blend together. Remember, uh, how many? Okay, how many people here are married? Raise your hand. How many people are happily married? No. <laughs> you ever, you know, what my my Dave Capow, my best man, he said to me, 
You're in striking distance. You have to put up both hands. Anyway. <laughs> I surrender. Um, they, <laughs> 36 years. Amen. We've got 30 years on uh, Tuesday. But Dave Capowan told me, he says, he said, Brother Cam, he says, you know what? Just learn to love your wife no matter what. Just keep loving your wife no matter what. He also told me to learn the term yes, dear, very quickly, which I did. But, uh, but, but just learn to love your wife, love your spouse. You know what? If we just love God, we'll love everybody else. You know, a lot of people say, well, you might, you know, I'm ex-military. Um, I, and I, I don't like any attacks on the military. I really don't. And somebody asked me, well, you must hate that guy that shot that soldier. I said, no, I hate his sin. I don't hate him. He needed Jesus Christ. He needed Jesus Christ. Now, let me continue on. Number two, I'm, <laughs> man, time is going by fast. Um, number two, we want the same expressions of love that we give. I'm only going to love him if he loved me back. Okay, folks, listen to me. You can't outlove God. Amen? Okay, when, um, uh, 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 how much of your money did God give you? All of it. It's all God. God, you live in a country, if you're on unemployment, God, gave, God laid it on the government's heart to give you unemployment. You got a job, that's God. God gave it to you. Your health, how much of your health did God give? All of it. Do you realize you could go like that? How much of your wealth or lack thereof did God give? In some cases, my case, lack thereof. All of it God gave you. So if, again, if, we, if God gave us as much as we give him, how poor would we be? It's a, it, that's, a, that's, a, that's a thought that we, we should really take home and think about. There are certain ways that each of us say, I love you. For the most of us, we want to have the expression of love you know a husband can say to his wife i love you or a wife can say to her husband i love you and then beat the snot out of them is that love it's not again people there's a saying and i said it this morning people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care uh, uh when my wife and i were dating and 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 i'm i i i actually had a young couple um ask me to help them with their dating and they and, and they they they're i they they i said you need to show when they just started dating the good christian couple good young couple christian couple i said you need to show each other 100 ways that you like each other before you say i like you you say well that's kind of old-fashioned yeah it is but you know what old fashioned's a pretty good way to go and then when you get to the I like you stage, show them each other 100 ways before you say I love you. And then say I love you. See, because actions speak louder than words. I love you, Lord, but I'm not going to church. I love you, Lord, but I'm not going to serve you. I love you, Lord, but I'm not going to tell that person about Jesus Christ. I love you, Lord, but you can't have this area of my life. I love you, Lord, but you can't do this or you can't have that way or you can't. I want my own way. You ever went to Walmart and you seen a little one of those little kids, you lovely little children? I want my toy. You have you're not one of those, are you? Uh, have a big huge temper tantrum in the mall. Uh, man, I was there the other day, and this kid was just a whale. And I walked over. Uh, I walked over to the to to to, to there was the, the wooden spoons, and I picked it up, and I said, "Ma'am, would you like one?" She says, "I'm both ready to do it." Amen. That kid had. I don't believe in beating your kid, but you know what? That's why God gave you rounded tushies. This kid had a huge meltdown. The mom says, if you don't stop, I'm leaving you. I'm like, I got to see this. <laughs> I kind of leaned up against the thing, and this kid's having a nuclear meltdown. <laughs> Kicking and screaming, and wanted, honestly wanted a $2.50 toy. And the mother said, five, <laughs> four, <laughs> three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one. Yeah. 
started walking away. That kid stopped real quick when he knew nobody was around. Why am I saying this? Is that kid loves something, not someone. I don't love anything. I love someone. And the more clo the closer you walk with God, the more you love God, the more your relationships with everybody else will work out a whole lot better. Have you ever got up in the morning, and I'm, I'm going to say this and then I'm done, but I'm, I'm going to have to continue on with this next week. Have you ever got up in the morning, and you woke up five minutes before you need to leave for work, and you got up and you just went, whoom, right out the door, and you didn't have time to pray, and, okay, nobody's done that, have you? And all day, you're in a foul mood because you didn't spend time with God. How many people that ever happened to? Raise your hand. Amen. A few of us that are honest. The rest of you are liars. <laughs> Teasing it. For those who don't know me, I love to have fun in church. I'm sorry. But we've all had done that. Or your wife. Oh, sorry. Wives don't do this. Your ladies, your husband has upset you and you have just all day. Husbands, you come home and your wife is in a happy mood. You've had a bad day. Guess what happens? Your wife is singing. She puts a little perfume on. Hi, dear. Good to see you home. And you smell that good food. And she's all happy and she gives you a hug and a kiss. And you're like, what happened at work? Everything's okay. Aren't you glad God does not base your relationship, his relationship with you on your relationship with him? So why do we base our relationship on others or not base our, on our relationship with God? Because we're foolish. Our relationship with God needs to be first and foremost. And if we don't have a proper relationship with God, all our other relationships will be bad. I'm going to make the statement and then I'm finished. I know a preacher who said once said, you know what, I will never, these are the sins, and he listed a bunch of sins, that he will never have to worry about him committing. Guess what he committed? All those sins. Why? His relationship with God was off. If your relationship with God is off, you will be in most men most miserable. Of all men most miserable. You don't read your Bible in the morning, you're in trouble. You don't pray, you don't ask God to bless your day, you'll be in trouble. Can we turn this off now? Um, thank you. Um, you, don't, you don't spend time with the Lord. Every relationship you have around you will be off. How is your relationship with God? If you stood before God right now, if God came in this room and looked at you and said, Hi, what would you be ashamed of? I got that sin. I harbor this ill feeling. I shoulda, woulda, coulda. I got a sermon I'm working on, shoulda, woulda, coulda. I shoulda done it, I coulda done it, and I woulda done it, but. My dear friends, are you having a little bit of problem with your relationship with God? Maybe tonight you don't know Jesus is your Savior. If you died tonight, you don't know 100% sure you go to heaven. We'll get that straightened out real, real quick. We'll show you not what man says. We'll show you what the Bible says about how you can know for sure if you died today, if, if Sarah was to go psycho and just go nuts and run you all down in her car, how you can know for sure your dad would go to heaven. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with what he did. The only thing it has to do with you is you saying, okay, God, I'll accept. Hey, but how, if you're saved here tonight, how is your walk with God? Are you a shoulda, woulda, coulda? Are you, I'm okay, this is cool, it's fun. Do you know every day serving God, every day walking with God is a fun day? It's unique. It's like a snowflake. It's different. It's, it's, it's just fun. I could be doing so much more, so other places. I gave up $52,000 a year pay cut to be a pastor. 
But I'm here to tell you, there's no greater life. Young man, it was a pleasure having you here tonight. Young man, folks, it's a pleasure. That's what it's all about. Every relationship we have will be a direct result with our relationship with God. Why does this world hate so much? No God, no peace. God doesn't say, oh, let's blow up a plane. Oh, let's go shoot these people. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Let's hate people. <laughs> because God is love. How is your relationship with God? You and him, nobody else, just, just you and him.